it came to a crunch point where I said, no, I'm not going to sign over the house to you. That's not happening. Then suddenly, um, one morning, bang, 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 on my door um, at the police. They carted me off to the police station uh, and I had I'd been accused of rape and child molesting of my daughter. And once we got divorced, I knew, regardless of how I felt, what my children needed. And that was him regardless. And I knew also from my faith what was his right and I could not take that away from him. And the only problem here is a lot of women that now I coach, they are very scorned and they're bitter and they do want to take it out on the other person when I'm like, you know what, you're hurting your child. I got to a situation where my children suddenly were cut off from me by the mother. She wouldn't let me um, see them. Okay. Like if you went to these like ex-partners and said to them like, do you love your kids? Yes, I'll die for them. Forget die for them, you're killing them. When no one wants you to die for them, you're, you're killing them. I didn't want him to be part of my son's life anymore. But it's only until now that I've done the work that I realized that it wasn't about my son all along. It was about me. It was about how I felt towards him that I was inflicting onto my child. They're not doing it by themselves. They've got a collective behind them. Mom, dad, brother, sister, friends. cousins, friends. Friends, a lot of friends. Friends, a lot of friends. Which gonna call. <laughs> yeah. What struck me was, look, you identified who the real winner is, the children. You know, fathers, we want, you know, our sons to become like us. And, and they should, because that masculinity that comes from a man can only come from a father. A woman can never give that, no matter how much we try. We can never, we can never fulfill the role of a father. Men are very silent. We don't talk about our yes. problems. And this is what puts us in a downward spiral that makes us go commit suicide, depression, and all these other things. <laughs> Islamnet is raising funds to establish a masjid and community center in Norway and they urgently need your support. This donation will be a sadaqah jari for you because every person that comes a step closer to Allah through your donation, you will inshallah be reaping the reward. Click the link and donate what you can. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, brothers and sisters and dear friends. Hope you guys are well inshallah. Uh, welcome to the Bitter Truth Show uh, on this episode. Uh, before I start, I want to praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the most merciful, the most just. All praises, glory and gratitude belong to Him. Our aim with this show, with our guests as well, our honourable sisters and our honourable brothers, and myself, is to help the breakdown of the family unit, which we can see. So that's one of the reasons I started this show, um, and may Allah bless them, because without the guests, we, there won't be a show. Um, so today's topic is actually something um, I have heard of, somehow witnessed, not myself, um, and it's a disturbing issue. And the brother who actually organised this to invite our guest, which I'm going to go to in a minute, uh, he's been telling me about this issue for a long time. And I know many men who have been going through this uh, personally. And I didn't get the chance to do that because I really wanted to do justice to it. It's easy to just do a face account video, but I really wanted to do justice to it by talking to real people who are living, living this, um, in, in this situation. So yeah, let's get straight into it. Before we start, I just want to make a few things clear. Um, obviously, we're Muslims, we know of our language, we know that anyways. Uh, backbiting, let's be careful to backbiting. It can be unintentional, but let's just be careful too because we've got many other topics which we're going to discuss. And that's it. Other than that, disagree in a respectful manner. It, you can, you know, raising your voice doesn't mean you're being rude. It's fine if you're passionate. It, just don't raise it too high, but that's it. So let's start off with our guests. Please tell us a bit about yourself, inshallah. I'm going to give you my mic because okay. we've got one mic missing. So yeah, please tell us a bit about what you do. And, oh, sorry. Today's topic is basically, in a nutshell, um, fathers who are not able to see their kids. Okay, so uh, basically, um, please tell us a bit about yourself. And uh, pertaining to this topic, what is it that you do? Assalamu alaikum. Uh, my name is Ahmed Raiden. Um, I'm a member of the Muslim Father Support Forum. Uh, what we do is basically we help fathers uh, get back, to, get access to their children by the courts. Um, and we see many cases of fathers losing access. And then we help them through basically the whole court process. So that's us. Uh, Asalaamu Alaikum, my name is Gol. Uh, similarly, I work with the uh, um, oh, with the Muslim Fathers Support Forum. I've been involved because of uh, my situation uh, and, and my involvement personally um, with my children and how I had to uh, fight uh, to get, gain access to the children. So I've been there, I've done that, I've got the experience and I understand and feel what other fathers, fathers are going through. And this is what I want to do, I want to contribute uh, you know, in supporting and helping uh, other fathers as well uh, to get back their children. Oh, Inshallah, yeah. and that's one of the reasons uh, we invited the brothers. Um, and well, the sisters, have, they've been here before. You can maybe give a little introduction about yourself, sister, Inshallah. Hi, my name is Assalamu Alaikum. <laughs> my name is Amira. Um, 
yeah, I'm just getting into this podcasting, um, you know, thing. And inshallah, you guys will see more of me and more of my input in femininity and just how to be a better person in general. Asalaamu Alaikum, my name is Ira. I work in a school and I'm a content creator. Assalamu alaikum. I'm Fahima Mohammed. I'm a broadcaster, TV presenter, and producer, as well as a life coach, helping clients through their issues. And this is definitely one topic that I definitely have loads of case studies for. And uh, being divorced myself, um, gone through um, sort of like separation with children involved, um, definitely want to highlight some of the positivities of when you do things in a particular way that it can actually work. So, yeah, inshallah, we'll go into it. Okay, that's fine. Perfect. May Allah bless you guys, inshallah. So, just to introduce a bit of others. Um, that's the sound that it makes. Uh, but uh, basically, if you have an opposing view to the other side, or it can be just, you know, mm -hmm. um, you when you press that, you get one chance to press it on the show. It gives you a chance of one and a half minutes to speak. Nobody can interrupt. It's just there for that. So, if you somebody says something and you just want to cut them in a respectful mm -hmm. way, it's you can use that, inshallah. So, let's get straight into it. Um, so... I want to hear some stories first. So, because you guys say you have experience and mm -hmm. the topic in hand pertaining to fathers, uh, we will have a topic pertaining to also sisters where the fathers disappear from the kids' life as well. So, mm -hmm. let's just be just in that as well. But today's topic is specifically this What stories or things that you have gone through personally yourself, if you're comfortable discussing, what is going on? Like, I, I really want to know what is going on. Okay. So, I'll talk a bit, a bit about my story, my journey to the Muslim Father Support Forum. So in 2010, I split from my then wife um, and we had two children together. Um, and Hamda, for five years after that, after we parted on good terms, I, I even did the traditional thing, uh, the Islamic thing of giving a gift uh, as you part, which is part of the part of the deen. And for five years, Alhamdulillah, everything was good. I had the kids every weekend. They were with me. Things were cool between me and the other party. Um, and that was my five years. In 2015, um, I got married again. That's when trouble began. Um, and then, so uh, one part of this is we had an agreement. So we had only an Islamic marriage. So we had a house. Well, it was my house uh, under Sharia. I paid for it. But I said, look, you know, what I'll do is I'll pay this house off and I'll give it to the kids because obviously generational wealth, all that, you know, I wanted them to be secure. And that was our agreement. And that was the agreement for five years. So I got married. Then suddenly... I receive a letter from a solicitor, or her solicitor, mm -hmm. saying that first she started off with, oh, I'm going to go to Dubai and take the kids. Then suddenly that switched to, well, no, I want the house. You have to give me the house. And I'm like, but, you know, it's in, it's my property. You know, we've already agreed that I'm going to give this to the kids. So that began the process. Um, we had a bit, a load of back and forth, um, and I'll cut that short to basically, it came to a, cr a crunch point where I said, no, I'm not going to sign over the house to you. That's not happening. You know, I'll, I'm willing to put it into a trust so I know it goes to the kids because that's what we agreed. But anything other than that, I'm not agreeing to. Then suddenly, um, one morning, bang, 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 on my door um, at the police. They carted me off to the police station uh, and I had, I'd been accused of rape and child molesting of my daughter. Um, now, just to clarify, the rape allegations were of about for 2010 time so that was my journey into this um and basically at the, at the end of it was i had to, i gave up my house i said look all right here you are take what you want here you are let me see the kids and the, the words were no you know um you're gonna have to go through court now at this point my kids were older they've been poisoned against me and they don't know the truth uh, and furthermore um at the time, I had some legal advice, which I actually found out later when I started to look into things myself, which was wrong, which was that basically because there's allegations against my daughter that my daughter would face a physical examination. Okay. And as a father, I couldn't deal with it. I'd wake up one minute like, nah, that's it. I'm gonna, yeah, I'll do it. I'm going to, yeah, go with it. Then you'd come to the evening and be like, no. And that, that's, I, I, that was a term of three weeks to the point I just said, no, you know what? As a dad, I've, I've got to protect my daughter. Mm. This is, this is. This is the hit I've got to take. Uh, so from that, um, that was my story. So I started to look into it and start to see a pattern <clears throat> of behavior. 
Um, and from that pattern, um, I start to help other brothers, uh, well, just, uh, just generally anybody, Muslim, non-Muslim. Um, but then I start to slowly notice a, a pattern of Muslim men turning up. And the Muslim men experience is worse because we get the standard allegations made in court yeah. and we get the extra of our religious uh, beliefs as well. Yeah. And these, these are from yeah. practicing double, sisters. Double exactly. Yeah. And obviously turning up with the earth, you know, uh, as a Muslim man in court with the, with the name Muhammad and so on, mm. it doesn't bode well <coughs> in that arena. Mm. So we started off a, basically a Facebook page, started off with about three, four people because I started to create this lane because we, know that we had a few Muslim brothers that was helping. Mm. And from that, to, 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 this was a kind of maybe in March 2020. Mm. And now to present day, we've got about 550 plus brothers, you know, Facebook forum. Uh, what's, what's, our group what's the organization chat, called? Uh, Muslim Fathers Support Forum. We're on Twitter, uh, Instagram, uh, Facebook, and we've also got the uh, webpage, which is uh, mfsf.uk. Okay. If anybody needs help, they can uh, contact us through those means. Okay. Yeah, inshallah. Okay. So right. that's, that's yeah. us there. Okay, so yourself, uh, brother, good? Yeah, did yeah. You, did Did you go through something similar like this? To, I mean, this is this is to me that's horrific. It, it's and these accusations are not. It's, it's not a joke. No. Um, not. Uh, but the, yeah, please. It's a very common scenario, though, isn't it? I yeah. mean, mine wasn't as extreme as that. Um, my situation was a very simple one. Yeah. But it was made complex by by the system, so mm. to speak, the family court system and yeah. all these agencies that. that, that I'm so get sorry. Involved. You know, I thought well, no one right. was going to hear you. Yeah. Well, there you go. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. So um, you know. Um, I won't go into too much detail, but uh, I got to a situation where my children suddenly were cut off from me by the mother. She wouldn't let me um, see them. Mm. And the only recourse I had really, because I didn't, I wasn't involved with the MSF, uh, MSF, SF, uh, uh, prior to that, was yeah. to go through the legal route, uh, get a solicitor who understood you know, what the process was and everything else. Uh, we tried to mediate with the mother um, to say, look, uh, everything was fine. Uh, children are living with me uh, and the mother, you know, 50% of the time. Let's just maintain that. Yeah. But I think uh, the family court system and just the, the all the various agencies, they emboldened her, I believe, to think that, you know, you can, you don't need to give the children back. You can come up, you know, have, you know, raise various false allegations and, and just wow. uh, state whatever you want. Did you, did you, was you accused of anything? Like specific, no need to go into detail about no, I, I had a uh, um, I had a non a non molestation order uh, okay. on me. Okay, but I mean, really, if you look at it, it's it, it's not funny, but it's all you know. It, it was laughable initially. My initial okay. reaction was some you know the statements that mm. were made in there. Um, you know, you okay. think how do they get away with it? But so, that's beside the point. Uh, Alhamdulillah, you know, uh, uh, I went through the system. Uh, halfway through, uh, I got into the. I can't even remember how we got in, uh, kind of uh, uh, in yeah, touch. Yeah, but we did. I, I got in touch with the brothers. I, I realized that you know, solicitors they just there to prolong cases and mm. get their paychecks. And then the brothers came along. Uh, they took on my court, uh, my case, um, and uh, we just we just got through the various uh, legal uh, uh, system, and uh, I managed to get my children. Uh, you know at, at 50-50, which is what I originally Under, asked. Okay. But unfortunately, it, mm. it only meant that I've... I mean, this isn't a big issue for me. Mm. I ended up spending about £15,000 literally just down yeah. there. But to me, I would do that a thousand times 100%. to get access to my children. It's as simple as that. Okay, may Allah make it easy on you guys. So, moving on to our sisters. I don't know if you guys are experienced. Sister Fahima, you said you're obviously divorced. You've got kids, alhamdulillah. Um, and I doubt you're a person who stopped your kids from seeing their father. Please... Tell us a bit, because I really want to know what is going through the mind of our sisters. I mean, these, these, these are Muslim sisters who are supposed to be God-fearing, who are, it's, it's, a, it's a form of dhulm. And to cut kinship is a major sin. It is a major sin. It is, it is to cut the kinship is a major sin. So from a sister's perspective, Sister Fahima, maybe you guys and the rest as well, can you please tell us a bit about what is going through their mind? Because to me, I see some trigger points of, he got married again. Um, he got divorced uh, and then he got another wife. I'm being honest, and I hear this a lot. Please enlighten us, maybe, inshallah, please. Um, I can see it from a lot of perspectives because aside from my own, obviously I coach clients, but I did that after I was divorced and I actually worked on myself and my home. 
So I was, you know, a traditional wife and stayed at home. And unfortunately, my ex-husband found that boring after a while and wanted to go elsewhere. But we are both single. We, he hasn't moved on. And once we got divorced, I knew, regardless of how I felt, what my children needed. And that was him, regardless. And I knew also from my faith what was his right. And I could not take that away from him. And the only problem here is a lot of women that now I coach... They are very scorned and they're bitter and they do want to take it out on the other person when I'm like, you know what, you're hurting your child, more importantly. So I feel that, you know, me, I'm very blessed and I'm very lucky because even now my ex and I co-parent extremely well. We have an amazing relationship regardless of how we ended because I make sure that he is involved with the kids, not because of me, but because of them. And I had to put myself aside no matter what I felt. And now we have such an amazing dynamic, probably better than most people that are even married because I created that. Because firstly, I had to think about what was my responsibility as a mother for my two boys and what they needed. And even though the father at the time was also like not happy about, you know, the situation as to being separated and, you know, not being there emotionally, I pulled him towards them. I pulled him towards them and I pulled them towards him when they felt even uncomfortable because I knew that that's what I had to build. And when I have clients now that go through this, I'm like, forget your feelings because the relationship is done. But what's important and you have to take responsibility is those children, Islamically and psychologically, they're the ones that's going to suffer because you can move on even to a second wife or a husband or whatever, but they have to come first and that's generational what they're going to go through. So I really do come on really strong on women as well, because when a woman is scorned, they don't see nothing. And I'm the first one to call them out to say, you know what, you need to stand back and you need to realize that no matter what that person did to you, even if it was abuse, you have to do it in the proper way. But he still has some sort of access, if it's through the courts, whether it's like through, you know, some sort of like access through, uh, you know, what's it called? Where you have to have, yeah. Yeah. So basically, you know, you have to do something where it's like, you know, a sort of a medium that's there, but they still need that. So I really am passionate about this topic and I am successful with my coaching because I had to do it myself for my home. And if I wasn't on point with my ex, with my children and mashallah, you know, they are so good with their mindset, having both of us and having the best of both worlds, because even though it was difficult for me to deal with, it was something that I had to do. And yes, okay, he did not get married again. He's still not married again. Maybe that could have caused issues. But the way I think, to be honest, I would say as long as the second wife was good to my children, they have a second person to turn to. You really have to lower yourself. And we don't do that. We don't do that because we just get jealous. We want to be the one on top. We want to be to get back and all of these things. And it really does not serve mm. anyone, least of all your children. So I'm thinking that, you know, hopefully with this podcast and people always, you know, assume the way I speak as well is from my own experience, but they don't know my experience. My experience is actually quite unique. And the reason why I talk in certain ways, which is maybe controversial is because I hear so many case studies every single day from so many different people. So I'm the voice of the voiceless, even if it's not my scenario, if it's not my situation. And I see both sides. And I've had a lot of men come recently to me telling me how their wives have stopped their children. And I am really, really disappointed. These are Muslim women who are destroying their future children. That's what they're doing. I mean, in this show, may Allah bless Sister Fahima. You know, sometimes people, I, I look at the comment section and yeah, they say, no, they like you know, me. sometimes, <laughs> I, I want to say they don't like you. May Allah bless you. You know, like there's <coughs> no contributions you do. But I mean, I have to put. I mean, I have to be honest, salute you. And it's to me, uh, it's 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 something to be admired. Like what you just said there, I was like, wow. Like, like, yeah, you know, it's like, absolutely refreshing for us to hear that as well. Yeah. Yeah. You know, um, exactly what you've kind of pitched out. You, you absolutely nailed it, because that's the person you're hurting the most yeah. is the child. When a child's not having access to their, uh, you know, there's the studies that show that actually single parent homes, you know, ch children tend to go off the rails. You know, and they, when they grow up, they grow with sort of anxieties and issues, which is problematic. And that's, you know, that, that's what we've got to tackle here. Because what we're doing here through this, when, we're, when you're going down this particular path, making father not see, you know, there are some mothers that don't get to see their children as well. Yeah. You know, we, we know about that. Topic, yeah. yeah. But when you do things like that, what you're doing, you're just destroying the ummah. Yeah. That's it. Simple as that. And credit to you, sister. You know what? 
it's really good to hear a good mm -hmm. co-parenting story. Mm -hmm. It really, it's, it's a rarity, in all honesty. In my case, it's very I was, I was speechless, I'll be honest with you. Like, like not, that, not that I doubted the sister, but, you know, <laughs> I, I, that, but it's, to me, it's like, wow, because I've heard so many stories, yeah? Um, it, it's, it's refreshing, it's refreshing. But even if after, we, we get so many cases where when brothers do get access, like, <laughs> you've fought through court, you think, right, I've come to the end of it. Let the peace and just the happiness mm -hmm. begin for the mm -hmm. kids and that. But no, it, it ramps up 10 times more. Mm -hmm. And you're just like, as brother Matthew was saying, you know, then she's not turning up, then you've got to do C79 application, you've got to go to court, this, that, the other. Oh, don't do it again, dear. Mm. And that's it. And, you know, it's, it's, these are the things. And like he says, the bandwidth gets evaporated. Mm. And then, you know. A lot of women feel pain and they just don't know how to challenge, channel, you know, channel mm. that kind of pain. So I worked on myself mm -hmm. and I knew, and also I know my deen. Mm -hmm. I know my faith very well. I could not keep my, you know, exes away from, you know, his kids. Mm -hmm. Nor could I keep my kids away from their father. Mm -hmm. They need that so importantly. They need both parents there. And especially after divorce, I have proven I've broken the boundaries to show that it can actually work. Yeah. It really yeah. can. And when you hold yourself back in that way, subhanAllah, so many opportunities and things come to you because of you, you know, lowering yourself. Of course, when there's abuse and things like that, you go through the specific ways of, you know, dealing with that. Those are extreme cases. But majority of the time, it's just because she's really scorned. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And you know what? That's a topic within itself. You know that I'm, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm trying to analyze, yeah, and diagnose. And, and I have a theory, which we can maybe discuss in a different topic, where this is stemming from. This, why is sisters like so like bitter and angry when it comes to divorce, etc. We shall discuss another topic, but Sister Ira and Sister Amira, is there anything you would like to add on? If yeah, there is? I do actually want to add something. Um, I believe it's genuinely stemming from uh, the fundamentals of what we are teaching our children. So the way women are raised um, in certain cultures, especially, especially within the subcontinent, we have this ideology that our children belong to us and we do not belong to us. We belong to the creator. So even with issues of, you know, oh no, you cannot marry this person. You cannot marry this. Your children are picking up on these things. And when they do end up getting married and divorcing, then they have this also, they have this entitlement to their own children. My child is mine. And they don't realize that actually, no, it's in a union. It's, it's a relationship. You cannot withhold an amana, a, chi a child which is gifted <coughs> from Allah between the man and the woman. It's an amana. And when you have that amana, you have to know how to deal with it. And you have to understand that it's a huge responsibility. And if you take your children, especially in your case and your situation, my father, Allah used to say, one lie can cause two countries to go to war. So if a woman can lie and say, you did this or you did that, you have to understand what you're doing. And our kids, it has to start from young. We have to stop our children from lying, understanding that lies can really affect even with girls and stop putting such fragilities on women because they can be, you know, very much, they can they can do these things they can lie and then when it when they get into a relationship and they are married and they start revealing this bitterness and this jealousy and this but this should have been picked up in their childhood because i guarantee you a lot of women and girls you can see certain traits from young you know and it needs to be stopped and vice versa for men as well I just say, that's a really important point you've made there because these women um <coughs> You know, the sisters that do this go down this particular path, they're not doing it by themselves. Mm. They've got a collective behind them. Absolutely. Mom, oh, dad, yes. brother, sister, friends. cousins, friends. Friends, friends, a lot of friends. Friends, a lot of friends. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, that are supporting them and like saying, Yeah, this, this, there. Mm. And they'll pull out they'll pull out Islamic teachings, they'll pull out societal stuff, they'll to justify this. And you know, um the, but, but again, you know, going back to what the sister said there, like in your situation. What struck me was, look, you identified who the real winner is, the children. Wow. And that's what's being lost here. And like you're saying, sister, you know, we need to start pushing our, 
not even just the sisters, I say everybody, you know, the Ummah, mm -hmm. tonight being more truthful and more sort of the, down the lines of Deen. And I think that's what's being lost here because you, a lot of people are living down the path of Deen at 90%, but suddenly there's 10% creeping in and that 10% is evaporating the 90%. Mm. Exactly. And we know that like, the, 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 um, the Prophet Sallam, you know, there was, they went into an, a, a war and there were some captives and uh, one oh, of the uh, women lost their child. So she was in like, where is my child? Where's my child? And the Prophet Sallam pointed and said, you see that woman? Do you think that woman would ever throw her child in the fire? He said, never. He said, by Allah, Allah is more merciful than that woman. But the point here is what? That mothers, their love for the children. That, 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 that um, woman was in like, where is my child? Now to think of mothers and you know, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given them that mercy and empathy and compassion to them, they're literally attacking their own kids. If you think about it, I love my kids so much. Like if you went to these like, ex-partners mm -hmm. and he said to them like do you love your kids yes i'll die for them forget die for them you're killing them yeah we know wants you to die for them you're, you're killing them and, and it's a selfish attitude it looks like you know uh the the, the two, two kids of adam alayhi salam where the jealousy or whatever it was took consumed him so much his hatred that he killed his own brother mm. so i think the hatred has gone to that level sister iris anything you'd like to add yes yeah, so um can we have the mic closer I to her, please? I am also divorced and I've also got a son, alhamdulillah. And, and I was in a very similar situation. So when my initial divorce took place, there was a lot of toxic feelings between both parties. And um, I was convinced that I didn't want him to be part of my son's life anymore. But it's only until now that I've done the work that I realized that it wasn't about my son all along, it was about me. It was about how I felt towards him that I was inflicting onto my child. Mm. And we don't realize that because a mother's love for her child is irreplaceable and she will go beyond all measures to protect and love that child. But often when we come out of a toxic relationship, whatever the reason may be, we label that man as he is now unfit to not only be part of my life, mm. but also the the child who is basically my life mm -hmm. and we then will do whatever it takes hence the accusations the lies the fighting not realizing that this protection that we're giving the child is actually toxic and even though it comes from a place of goodness because a mother's love isn't bad it's still a negative and it takes a lot for a woman to recognize that this is no longer about my child or maybe it never has been about my child but rather is about me and how I feel towards my ex-husband and when a woman gets divorced she's unfortunately shamed and a lot of the time she is blamed that it's her fault the marriage broke down so we often think he gave me the divorce or even if I initiate the divorce and we went ahead with it it's still his fault because nobody wants to take an accountability especially women we struggle but we will blame him. It's his fault that he couldn't fix up his act or he couldn't do this and he couldn't do that. Therefore, now I'm left on the side because now no one's gonna want me and my child because I'm now divorced from a single mom. So it, it in a way ruins our life. And the only thing we can do is make sure that doesn't happen to our child. But who's the person that ruined our life? Is that is the father, is the dad, is the husband, the ex-husband. But again, that comes back to having that toxic mentality. And I think when a woman starts to become aware of her emotions and is able to differentiate what is her experience, what is her emotions, and what is the child's experience and emotions, she's then able to create that boundary and that line to safeguard the child, but allow, him, allow the child to have that relationship with the father. And it's taken me, I don't know, four years to figure this out. Just a minute. Just what led you to that, though? You know, what what helped you to get to, to come to that realization? I or, had, or, or even beforehand, what made you like not one yeah. in the life, and then what made you change your mind? Because that's very important for us yeah. to understand. Sorry, what made me? So what first made you? Because you said it was a moment where you said you don't want your child to be involved in your yeah. ex partner's life. What led you to that, and mm -hmm. what made you change so we can understand the before and the after? Sure, it was fear. It was fear that my son was going to grow up to become like him, the man who hurt me, the man who ruined my life the man who abused me, the one who disrespected me, the one who took advantage of my kindness, of my love. It was fear that my son was going to become like him. Because as, you know, fathers, we want, you know, our sons to become like us. And, and they should. Because that masculinity that comes from a man can only come from a father. A woman can never give that, no matter how much we try. We can never, we can never fulfill 
the role of a father. But when there is fear that he's going to become like the man who I absolutely despise, because now we've labelled it as he's the one that ruined my, my life, rather than actually, no, it takes two hands to clap. I also ruined it. Again, it's coming back to taking accountability, which we don't do. And I think um, it was only until I started to work on myself as a person, I had so much bitterness in me and I was becoming like a narcissist. I hated it. I hated who I was. I felt like I was just stuck. And I felt like the world, the universe, everyone just owed me because I had sacrificed so much in my life and lost out on so much that now it was my turn to be happy. And I couldn't get that because I was so toxic and because of obviously what I was doing. And um, when I began working on myself, I realized in, in accordance to Dean as well, that I actually am nothing. I have no power over this responsibility that Allah has given me. He is just a responsibility. He's not my property. I cannot stop what he does or who he sees and especially not his own father. And I didn't have the best of all relationships with my dad. So I think that really helped the situation because I was like, hold on. I know how that makes me feel today. I wish I had that bond with my dad and I don't. I would know and it ever want my son to feel like that. Regardless of how his father is, if his father hits him tomorrow, that's fine. We'll go to court, done deal. At least tomorrow it won't be because of me. Mm. Or, you know, I look around and some of my friends or just people that I know, they would, their son will be like approaching teenage years and she will say something like, I wish I had not stopped them from seeing each other. That's and it's, the thing is, examples are all around us. It's just we need to open our eyes and see the actual detrimental effect that it's having on children. They're the innocent one here. We cannot use them to, to express ourselves. They're not an object. They're humans with emotions and with, with rights. Sorry to cut, but um, no, no, although this, you know, like I appreciate your situation and I think that it's it's good that you've come to that conclusion to allow your son to see your child. But men are not angels as well in the situation. And of course, I'm very much on the side of women should allow their children to see their fathers. But there are situations where the men use the children as ammunition against the mother as well. So no, of, of course, there's exceptions. Like for example, if we're talking about a father who is dangerous mm -hmm. to his, his children and you've been falsely accused of these things, um, you know, but if, 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 if a father is a danger, nobody's saying, you know, uh, the Sharia would not even uh, allow that to happen. But we're not talking about So when we said, for example, when I said to the brothers mm -hmm. that you shouldn't even be, why are you in that situation? You, you're looking at it from a different perspective. What, we can't talk about that because we're talking about you're in a situation, a predicament where you're picking the two. In your situation, what you're talking about is the man is the oppressor. He has to be in that situation in the context where he's a danger to his kids. And uh, so... But what if it's not and, and, and he's been and he's, been, and he's been found guilty. But what if it's not abusive? What okay, if okay, it's so bad manners and okay, okay, but, you okay know, the, sh the Sharia. That you don't I understand, want. I understand that, mm. But the thing is, I was speaking. I can remember about a year and a half ago, some sister, I think she's a student of knowledge, she contacted me. I think she wanted to invite me to some talk or I cannot remember exactly. Or I think there was some youth doing some madness, whatever. I can't remember. So she's talking to me, and someone said to me, yeah, she's a person of knowledge, etc. I'm talking, talking, talking to her. The topic went to somehow this issue, yeah. Mm -hmm. While well, she was justifying to me that. Why the sisters are right for not showing their kids? I was shocked. I, well, I, I I had to be like, well, hold I said, sister, can you rephrase? Like, I, I thought maybe I misunderstood her. She was justifying to me about how the women are right to use the kids. And I said to her, sister, do you mean in the sense of like the father's doing something? Like, no, no, no. You know, if she if he went and got married again, it's like, I'm thinking, what are you on about? Like, I, I was shocked. I was like, you you are the 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 the, the, um, the learned sister. If you're doing this, la la, we're finished. And I'll be honest with you, these stories have petrified me so much that it's a breath of fresh air to hear Sister Fahima, Sister Ayra, and Sister uh, Amira. Well, I'll be honest with you, they, they've literally made me like, well, hold on a second, there are some, there's, we haven't, we can't lose hope. Because to hear that from them, to me, and like, we, uh, like may Allah bless you guys, and especially Sister Ayra, where she said she was there. And she's, that realization to me is like, wow, hats off to you. Wow, hats off to you, the fact that you even <laughs> mentioned brave enough to say that today. Um, so it, uh, yeah. I, Sorry, just yeah. lastly, I wanted to add in, just because you've got a bad relationship with, or you had a bad relationship with your ex-husband, so he was abusive verbally, doesn't necessarily mean he's going to be that towards the kids. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I understand that if a man cannot control his anger, yes, there's likelihood of, of him of it bleeding out when he is with his children, but you cannot just 
stamp it as mm. yes, it's a failed relationship because he behaved like that with me. Therefore, he will do the exact same thing to the children. True. It's not worse. And also in SPCC, if we look at statistics, um, I'm not blaming sister. Yeah, uh, women tend to, women are the ones that usually actually uh, end up. Not like hitting their kids, they know. Like the, the statistics show them from NSPCC mm. uh, that the women are the main culprits when it comes. Maybe it's because they spend more time with the kids. I don't know. I'm not trying to say all of them, but they somebody can use it. A man can come and say, you know what, you're more of a danger according to statistics, and I'd want them to stay with me. So, family court and criminal court are two different things. Mm -hmm. If you take a man or a person to family uh, to criminal court, <clears throat> you have to have clear evidence to uh, uh, convict him. In family court, it's done on probability. Yeah. The mm. fact that you were just together, the probability is already there, the scale's there. Yeah. And what you need, so that probability counter, if it goes 51% one way, that's mm. it, you're guilty. Wow. So that's, so when, when you wow, see these is. things, yeah. And the thing is, right, it's inference, hearsay, and all these things, mm. not actual evidence yeah. that's convicting men in family court. In my, okay, that's interesting. They're saying in my country, and by the way, we're not asking anybody to beat their kids here, yeah? <laughs> uh, just before, we, yeah, yeah. So in my country, they say, if you don't um, smack your kids, you will be smacking your knees. Yeah, so uh, basically what that means is like, it can be that they die, or it can be that they go into a specific path, yeah? Mm -hmm. So once again, I'm not asking anyone, like when we're talking about beat, yeah? I hope you get the gist, yeah? That's interesting because the Sharia came to like, protect five things, which is the lineage, the religion, the aql, the wealth, and the health. And if you look at any of these five categories, there's a capital punishment in all of them. Yeah? Uh, adultery, we know what that is. Uh, stealing, um, leaving the religion, all that kind of stuff. There's capital punishments. And again, it's a deterrent. Because if you think about it, we, we talk about this. Who's going to go and see two people committing zina? And you're seeing the act, and you need to be specific about it. The whole point is it's a deterrent. Uh, but like you said about the Prophet, I haven't heard of that before, but again, it's there's like, like in, in the Quran, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, you have a dispute with your wife, talk to her, move from the bed. And then you can use some kind of a force. And we know that force is very, for example, you cannot leave a mark. Uh, you cannot cause pain. So it is there, but I'm thinking in that category, of course, the discipline and smacking the bum, etc. Um, I, I doubt that because some people can take it like, yeah, the process is to take a stick and start. You know, that's yeah. not the case. But what you're saying, it's true. There should be some kind of consequence. Now, let's just, it's the same topic. We just want to wrap up. So for, if there is a brother out there who's going through the situation, we know the sisters have given amazing nasiha to the sisters who are listening, alhamdulillah. And we ask, uh, inshallah, our sisters to, and, and this, this is a phenomenon that's going on. It is happening a lot now, yeah? Mm -hmm. And sometimes I talk about this and it really annoys me because like, there's certain, like, we have sisters team, like we have Salam, our organization, we have sisters team there. Sometimes we talk about these topics and someone says that, yeah, but uh, what about, uh, what, do you mean, what about, I'm talking about, like, can you imagine if group, if, imagine the topic today is men are beating their wives, beating, not like beating, yeah? And then I go, yeah, yeah, but you know, but, but what about the brothers? What, what, do you get what I'm trying to say? What kind? Of, yeah, I've heard that. I've, I've heard that. I've heard that. Wallahi, I, I, I've, I've heard, yeah. I've heard that. And, and it, uh, anyways, so the point is this: it's always mentioned. What we're talking about now is a phenomena that's happening. I'm hearing it left, right, center. So it's only just that we talk about this. So if you can speak to the men, inshallah, uh, brothers, and tell them legally what they can do if they are in a situation where they they have been stopped by seeing their kids. And I heard the brother said to me that, I don't know if this is true, but like, most likely it is, um, that a brother took his own life a week ago because he couldn't see his children. Yeah, he killed himself. Yeah. Is this true? Yeah, well, if you look at it, statistically, eight men a day are taking their lives. Um, you know, and about, I'd say half of that is family related. You know, there's been many men that, that through, you know, financial extortion, through the child maintenance service. There's a, a sister, uh, people should check her name, uh, check her out. Her name is Sister Sally Ann Burris. You should always uh, recommend you to check up on her. You know, she's doing a, a whole chunk of work. They've written a report and it shows you the amount of men, Muslim men, not Muslim men, but mainly non-Muslim men mm. that are committing suicide over these matters. Mm. See, the Muslim, alhamdulillah, this is the beauty of deen. Because we know of the last day we were just talking about this in the car, mm. <clears throat> that this is the difference. Because we know that we're going to get the ultimate justice after this. But you know, for those that don't have belief, they turn to, to turn to suicide because they don't see a light at the end of the tunnel. This is what what it does. And then you also hear about brothers, you know, obviously committing suicide, but also then lo losing their dean, losing their practice. Oof. And you know, who's picking up the tab on that? Well, you know, I, I think people need to figure that out. So. For brothers that are going through this situation, if you can, mediate. Let's try and let's stop feeding the beast of family court. Mm. Currently, you know, I'd say on average there's about 4,000 
Muslims in that family court. Wow. That's too many, right? We shouldn't be nowhere near that place. We've got we've got routes we can discuss. That's what we should be doing. Um, but that's not happening currently because the system's gearing... A, think about this. The system is adversarial. It makes a winner and loser. And right now, the courts sit on the side of women. Whether we agree or not, this, they, they, they can say whatever. But, but from what we've seen... You know, we're going into court with a better argument and everything, but because it's a woman, this like the other, you know, we're getting wiped. Now, what I'm saying is we shouldn't be going to this place. Even Islamically, I believe in the Quran it says don't go to man made courts or mm -hmm. you know, to, you know, the, the Sharia is enough. Mm -hmm. But Muslims are forgetting that. You know. Um, so if you can mediate, if you can't mediate and you've got no other course, you can obviously go seek legal help. Alternatively, you can come see us at mfsf.uk or Instagram or yeah. and all that. Um, and we'll, we'll, we'll talk to us, we'll guide you. And not only just there, you also meet other brothers that are going through it and talking about it, you know, because once you talk about it, especially talking to brothers that are going through it, we can help each other, lift each other. Men are very silent. We don't talk about our yes. problems. Yes. And this is what puts us in a downward spiral that makes us go commit suicide, depression, and all these other things. True. Don't You're not alone, brothers. You know, come join us, you know, Let's lift each other up, inshallah, you know, we'll, we'll find a way. Inshallah. Yeah, and I think it's important to understand that the Muslim Fathers uh, Support Forum, it's not about supporting the father. It's about uh, encouraging, um, you know, both parents to regain access to their children. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, unfortunately, what happens is by the time these brothers get in touch with us, they're already so deeply involved mm. in the court system. And it's usually a case of, team mother versus the team father whereas it should be team parents trying to find the best solution for the children and that's what we mm -hmm. we try to do we try as as brother ahmed said you know we will try and mediate uh, we'll try and do what we have to do for the the betterment of the children yeah. not for the betterment of the father or the or the or even the mother but for what is the best for the children and you know it, it's it's obvious that the the best interest in the children is to have access to both parents. Yes, uh, statistics show that. I mean, uh, it's, it's, it's clear. It's, it's detrimental. Yeah. It is literally detrimental to the yeah. uh, 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 the family unit. Yeah, you know. Um, yeah, and that that's what we need. That that's what we're striving to do, and we're striving to you know obviously work with all the authorities and your social services and even the legal system to mm. try and get a resolution as as soon as possible, so it kind of minimizes as much disruption um, uh, for the children. And that, that's, that's... May Allah bless you guys, every single one. And we're going to go to the sisters. Um, but just touch upon that. I, again, the situation that you're in, I would personally say, personally to me, I, if I was in that situation, I would try my best to fight for my kids. This does not mean, just because I'm saying this, that, oh, I'm, I'm... No, because the dilemma that one is in, it's such a... Like, I'm being honest. To me, it's like... And, and I understand where Brother Matt is coming from, but to me, it's like my kids, and especially a daughter... Like to me specifically, I've been mean especially a daughter, bro. I would say fight for it. And inshallah, put your trust in Allah. And one thing I just want to touch on before going, which we miss and we need to incorporate this here, is taking the aql over the knuckle. Yeah? What I mean by this is taking your logic over what God decreed. And this is, what, this is the reason why shaitan went astray. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told him something, but logically he said, no, this is better for me. You know why a lot of sisters, I believe, are going through this? It's because they are feeling, okay, let's suppose the man was unjust, oppressive, whatever it may be. How many of us have tawakkul in Allah's justice? You know why we do this? Because we're seeing, mm. I don't believe in that. And because I don't believe in that, I'm going to carry the justice out myself because I don't trust Allah can do it for me. Sometimes it's like that. Mm. Well, let me tell you something. I don't know stories. If you put your trust in Allah and you believe this person really oppressed you and wronged you, Wallahi Allah's justice will be carried out. Believe me, if you genuinely have trust, because when you have tawakkul in Allah, you're not going to cross the boundaries of the sharia by not showing the kids. You're not going to do that. You're going to go about it the right way. And believe me, if you genuinely have tawakkul in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, His justice will prevail. And if you have that trust, and because we don't have it, that's the reason why you've got these sisters in niqabs and whatever it may be, mashallah, practicing qiyam, going to the police, going to the British law. Yeah, and we're not that we're saying you shouldn't. Yeah, you guys get the gist. Yeah, the point is that. So I would say have trust and tawakkul if you've been oppressed, rather than taking it into your own hands and causing injustice, which you're going to go through in this life, in the hereafter, and your kids. So it's like a, it's like a, it's like a suicide bomber. Yeah, you're, you're every, you're, everyone's going down. Um, sisters will end. Please, yes. And I'm uh, sorry, I just want to add this to it. So just to add to my situation. Um, so after all of this, I can't, after it was all finished, I was like, you know what, that's it. I went on with my life. Alhamdulillah, I met my wife. We got married. And at the age of 45, I got blessed with twins. 
Alhamdulillah. And I've got twins. I see them every day. They're happy. They're healthy. They just up. The house is full of love and happiness and everything. But my other two children that I don't see, I still feel that pain. Mm. And that pain is what I turn into MFSF, into helping brothers. Because no brother should feel what I feel. Yeah. That's what I used it for. So whatever we feel, we can use it for good, bad, this, that, the other, you know, we make choices. And that, I appreciate your take on it, Brother Matthew. You know, I, I get that. And I was there at some point as well. But but I, I, I've chosen a different path. And that's, you know, that these are choices we all have to make when that time comes. Yeah. But, you know, it's just there. Just to give a bit of take. May Allah bless you, man. I can hear from your voice the pain you've gone through. And I can't blame both. Both this I, I can't. But let's just end on it. Sister Amira, then Sister Ira and Sister Fema, and then we'll end the show. Um, just to the women out there who are possibly doing this, like, honestly, fear Allah, because at the end of the day, you will not be buried with your children. You're going to be buried alone. Mm -hmm. And if the father is there and he's able and he's he will look after the children and he is not a threat to the children directly, then you should allow your children. And for us, for me, it's a very big indication that this Ummah is really failing and is in a bad place that we are going to outside sources like a, like a system which is based on racism and built on mm -hmm. racism. We never win in these courts as ethnic minorities. Mm -hmm. So if you are using that system it's already a big indication that this almost really suffering at the moment. And we need to really take a big look at ourselves to see what this issue is and where it's stemming from and how we can prevent this. Maybe some people shouldn't be rushing into marriage just because of marriage and having children. Not everyone should just be rushing without doing that groundwork first. But yeah, that's me. Sorry. Um, I think I just want to emphasize on um, keeping your experiences and emotions separate to your child because you're not, even though you're one, you're not one. You know, he's, he or she has their own individual life. And just to, if you are, if you have come out of a divorce, I think it's very, very important to work on yourself, to find yourself again and to ground yourself again because this divorce does not define you. The way he treated you, whether it was abuse or not, it doesn't define you. It's up to you how you want to be defined. If you want to be that loving, caring mother, then you can be that. You don't have to be the person who is so lost in her emotions and is just out there to get revenge. As our brother Ali said, that Allah is the most just and the revenge that he will get on your behalf is nothing com in comparison to what you can do. Did I say that right? Yeah, mm, I didn't know the justice. 100%, 100%, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> the justice, yeah. So yeah, I just 100%. leave that up to Allah's hand, and I think that's where I found a lot of my peace because I was done fighting. There's only so much I can do as a mother, and I've exactly. got so many roles. I'm not just a mother. That's not my my only identity. I'm also a Muslim, and I'm a woman, and there are things that I want to accomplish in life, and I can do that. And by allowing the father back into his life, subhanAllah, was the best decision I've ever made. And seven years later, I can see them bonding together. Mm -hmm. And above all, it's given me some of my weekends back. You know, I kind of feel like <laughs> Perks I'm a human yeah. again. You know, yeah. I'm not just always running around mm -hmm. doing chores. No, no, that's, that's, that's a, 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 just a, a <laughs> may Allah bless you, Sarah, but being a mother <laughs> yeah. is the best thing that you can ever be. And I'm not that I'm saying this because you know why this feminist ideology is, you know, infiltrated. You know, we see that like, oh, I'm not just a mother. Wallahi, and I'm not, I, know, I know you don't mean it like that, but wallahi, you being a mother, wallahi is the best thing ever. Yeah. And sisters like you, we honor and admire. May Allah bless and preserve people like you, yeah. your mothers. And alhamdulillah, obviously this doesn't mean you can have a little you know, job. We talked about this career. Well, we, we, we discussed it anyways. <laughs> but yeah, just wanted to add on that because some sisters feel like, you know, oh, I'm just someone. No, well, life yeah. is such a precious thing, man. It's it's amazing. So, yeah, please. And it just gives you more time as well to yeah. um, study your own dean because now you don't have to worry about childcare. You can go to these workshops. You can go to this lecture mm -hmm. or just do whatever you would want to do as within, of course, aligned with dean. So it's not always have to be bad. And I think it's just taking that initial step that's really daunting. But I think if you don't take that step, then you're never truly going to know. Sister, can I just ask one question? Sure. Obviously, you know, you had a, a toxic relationship and you saw him as the abuser. Mm -hmm. Now, after you've seen him bonding with, with, with your son uh, and, you know, you've seen 
him being a father. Do you still see him as a, an abuser? I don't. And I think it's not necessarily because I've seen them bond, because I've only just started to see them bond together. Oh. But um, it was because I did a lot of work on myself. Wow. Because I, I wasn't going to let that define me. I wasn't going to let that hold me back. And to be fair, it's like I was drinking the poison, hoping he would die. Mm. Wow. You know? Deep and Oof. in reality, it was just me. I was literally deteriorating away, away in, in all in, in my aspects of being, my hope in Allah was being questioned because I didn't know if, you know, like I, I remember sitting in the courtroom and I, I, I was stuck there for about two hours and I did nothing but pray that please, Yallah, let this go into my favor in the family court, which I now regret going to. And it didn't. And it made me question like, like you, you know my pain, you know what I'm going through, you know what our relationship was like. So why? Yes. Okay, Sister Fahima, quickly, please, inshallah. Okay. Um, you know, when you mention about choosing those two regrets i had a client recently as well who's you know was taken away his kids were taken away from him and he did he did choose to walk away from that too not because he's not choosing his children because the women and the system do do want to you know they do want to destroy him right with money with finance so even if he was to fight for that he'd be end up with nothing so it's not like as if you're choosing that career or that business you're doing it for your future and for that family and you've got to have trust in that because they're going to come back to you and you're going to have to be somebody especially as a man very good Right. Yeah. So I think it's really important that we understand that they're not giving up on you. They're just looking forward. And right now they're not falling into the pit that you're trying to put them in. Excellent. Exactly. Guys, I think that was maybe the most productive uh, episode we've had. May Allah bless you guys, inshallah. Amazing, amazing. Um, uh, yeah. So uh, that's it, guys, uh, from the bitter truth. Uh, as you can see, we spit some bitter truths here, especially with that poison bomb. Mashallah, may Allah bless your sister. Uh, yeah, that's, that's, that's what it is. And hope you guys have benefited. If you want to suggest specific topics for us, um, email, inshallah, at uh, the bitter truth at bitter truth show at gmail.com. Uh, if you want to be a part of the panel, please get in contact with us, inshallah. And until next time, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. And we would like to also hear the other side. If there are sisters who have gone through where the, the, the fathers disappeared or whatever it may be, please, we would like to hear, inshallah. That, that'll be one of our. Topics. Till next time, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. The Prophet وسلم, said, Whoever builds a masjid for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah will build for him a similar house in Jannah. On that day where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that our books will be given and every little atom weight of good deed you've done will be there. And imagine you see a mountain and you're like, What a lucky person. Which righteous person? And Allah says, This is for you. For me? Yes. What did I do? You allowed people to pray. You built a masjid. I never had the money to build a masjid, oh Allah. You helped. You gave towards it and Allah gives you the reward of as if you've built it. Donate now guys and do not delay. And share the video for extra rewards.